Now, if you've been a fan of Power since the very beginning, then you obviously know that Breeze is this character that has always been teased from the main characters. He's basically this character that taught Ghost, Kanan, and Tommy the game. And based on what I saw in this finale of Raising Kanan, there's obviously a major clue as to who Breeze is in that final episode of season two. Just take a look at the scene. Now, I want you guys to take a close listen at what Kanan says about Breeze to Tariq at Breeze's apartment. A friend of mine, Breeze, used to live here. What happened to him? He got shot in this room. Your pops knew Breeze would be here at 7 o'clock when it's checking. Nigga love has to be back. So Wolves came up after school, we broke in, we waited for him to come home and watch TV. So, just scared? Breeze didn't have time to get scared. 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 There's literally a shootout going on not too far from his door, and he's inviting someone who's involved in the shootout, basically willing to help this person and to protect this person, which is something that falls in line with Breeze's character, with his character's description. The word fearless really represents this character. Just look at the way he stepped up to Marvin a couple episodes back. All right? Yo, I wanna say it again. You need to back the fuck up. You serious? You think I'm scared of you, nigga? I got shot seven times and I'm still putting fools on their back. Be the next nigga. One thing that the producer sort of sneaked in there in that particular scene was the fact that he has a lot of clothes hanging up right where the door is, which lets us know that he might not be staying on that wheelchair, and it lets us know that he's a very outgoing person. Certain people who find themselves in that situation, they can eventually recover, and just based on Kanan's description of Breeze, I don't think that he's gonna be a character that does too much. Like he said, he had the same routine every single day. Same routine every day. We always do that motherfucker. The type of routine that someone that's around the age of Canaan wouldn't have when you really pay some thought to it. Breeze is obviously an older person. The producers probably told the fans that he's somewhere around the age of Canaan to throw them off because they're obviously not going to reveal such a huge detail about Breeze's character so soon before his review. I know what you guys must be thinking, this could just be any guy, right? But take a closer look at this scene. Does something stand out at all? Your pops knew Breeze be here at 7 o'clock when it's checking. Your pops knew Breeze be here at 7 o'clock when it's checked. There's clearly a 7 here, a 7 over there, and then another 7 over here. It's very suspicious how they keep bringing up the number 7 when it comes to this character. Pay very close attention to what he says here in the scene. You think I'm scared of you, nigga? I got shot 7 times and I'm still putting fools on their back. I got shot 7 times and I'm still putting fools on their back. You think I'm scared of you, nigga? I got shot seven times and I'm still putting fools on their back. The producers don't do things like this by accident. There's clearly a meaning behind it. I'm pretty sure they looked back at that scene when Kanan was describing the character of Breeze in order to give the fans a major clue about who this person is. I got you. Demo, nigga. Better recognize. Demo, nigga. Better recognize. Demo, nigga. Better recognize. Now, when it comes to the name Demo, there's definitely a meaning behind it. There's this theory going around about Breeze being D-Wiz's older brother, right? How do we not know that Demo 
S and D was his older brother. Pay some thought to that. Now, when you look at this whole scenario, the way that this scene played out, it kind of looks very similar to Famous's situation. Now we know that the whole situation will eventually fall back on Famous. There's no way they're gonna get out of that, you know, with the guy being there. But just pay attention to how similar that entire scenario with Famous is to Marvin's scenario. There's a shootout going on in both scenes, and a stranger opens a door. Based on what Famous did, there's a huge possibility that he's not gonna be around as much as we think he is. His days in the streets are numbered, basically, and I feel like Famous being the person he is, and since his sister just moved to Los Angeles, I feel like he's gonna take the opportunity to, you know, snitch on what he did, and basically tell the feds anything that they want to know, including who was the real person responsible for killing d -Wiz. And once this word comes out, that's when I believe that d -Mo is actually gonna, you know, take it upon himself to go back to the streets and sort of seek revenge because as of right now, there's no way for anybody to sort of leak the fact that Raquel was the one responsible for d -Wiz's murder. And if the theory is correct, that Breeze is related to d -Wiz and he wants, you know, revenge. The only way that he's gonna know about this is if someone snitches on what Raquel did. And I feel like Famous is the person that's actually gonna be able to do this. Just with the mess that he got himself into recently, just pay some thought to it. It makes perfect sense. Notice how similar these scenes are. They're literally just an episode apart, basically. I feel like all of this happened for a reason. This wasn't done by accident. These two situations are going to lead to something. His name is Demo. This character's name is D Wiz. The theory is that Breeze is supposedly D Wiz's older brother. I feel like this is D Wiz's older brother. This is Breeze, like I said. It makes perfect sense. What's even more interesting is the fact that we don't really know why he was shot. He could have been shot trying to get revenge for d -Wiz. Put some thought to it. Why would the producers give this guy a name that's so similar to d -Wiz with all of these clues in place? And if Kanan would have trust anybody, that person would have to be someone from the area. And what better option would there be than to have it be someone who basically has been there for a while and we haven't just, you know, noticed it yet. When you pay some thought to it, the people that are surrounding Kanan wouldn't let him around just anybody. They would eventually catch him being around strangers that that they would fear or not, you know, really people that he should be surrounding himself with at the end of the day. And I feel like this person, now that he saved Marvin, is going to have their trust at the end of the day. That makes perfect sense when you really think about it, you know, like... Why would they want to trust some stranger being around Kanan? If Raquel is gone, they're going to want to have people around them that they trust. And I personally don't think that Raquel is going to actually be around when Breeze is around. Because why would, you know, Kanan be dealing with someone else now? Someone else who has that same amount of power that she has. Which means that things could go either way with Raquel's character. We know that for anybody who is in that life... All that comes out of it is either death or prison. And I feel like one of those two things is not to catch up with her. Again, I do not see, you know, Kanan dealing with Breeze while Raquel was around. I don't see his uncles dealing with Breeze if Raquel was around. Like, just pay attention to how much control she has. She literally told Lou that she controls him, she owns him. You know, I keep waiting for you to figure it out, Lou. To see what's as obvious as a nose on your motherfucking face, but you ain't never gonna see it. So I'm gonna have to say it out loud for you. So we can stop having these fucking talks because I'm tired. So let me make a play. Hmm? Let me make this shit real simple. I own you, nigga. Her brother's not gonna trust any strangers who basically, you know, try to involve themselves with them. It's gonna have to be someone that has their trust already. Someone like this guy who saved Marvin's life. Now, if it doesn't turn out being this guy, despite all of these clues being in place, there's a high possibility that Breeze could be the person that's behind this door. And they were just hinting at the fact that this is the floor that Breeze lives in. But let me know you guys thoughts on this. 
hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you for watching.